Let us now, brothers, enter the third and the last section of this teaching, of this video teaching. What, what we're going to do is, we're going to understand how, how certain things are being played out in the vision. Let me just read verses 5 to 8 of Zakaria 5 and let me show you what is happening over there. Zakaria 5, verse 5 and onwards, Then the angel who was speaking with me went out and said to me, Lift up now your eyes and see what this is going forth. I said, What is it? And he said, This is the ephah going forth. And he said, This is their appearance in all the land. And behold, a lead cover was lifted up. And this is a woman sitting inside the ephah. Then he said, This is wickedness. And he threw her down into the middle. I have kept the KJV. He cast it into the midst of the ephah and cast the lead weight on its opening upon the mouth thereof. You need to understand, brothers, what is happening over here. What is happening is that Zachariah sees the ephah, then the angel shows a woman inside the ephah when he has opened the, the lead cover. And then the passage says that the, the angel is casting her back inside. Why is he casting her back inside? There's something that is happening over here. And then he covers uh, the, uh, the, the ephah with the, with the lead cover. Okay, that's what is happening. Now listen to this very carefully. There are mysteries in the Bible. There are mysteries, mysterion, mysteria, that are only revealed and unlocked uh, in the New Testament. It is the New Testament, the Brit Khadasha, that, uh, that uh, reveals uh, and speaks of uh, mysteries, mysteria. Lord says in Matthew 13 that uh, he speaks of the mysteria of the kingdom. That I will utter things hidden from the foundation of the world. And there are different mysteries. Now what I'm going to be showing over here brothers. Is that there is something that is happening over here. And nobody knows what, why this is happening. The Tanakh, you, you, you go throughout the entire Tanakh. And you will not understand why is this happening. They don't know. The answer to this is given in the Brit Khadasha. When you study eschatology. You understand that you see over here there is a restraining that is happening. There is a restraining that takes place and just like uh, the epistle to the Ephesians is about ecclesiology. The epistle to the Romans is about soteriology. The epistle to the Thessalonians is about eschatology. So let us go to that passage, 2 Thessalonians chapter 2 and understand some things and see how certain things are interwoven. Okay, but, but, but the mystery, listen to this, mystery is unlocked in the New Testament. The Old does not give the answer. So let us see what's happening over here. Uh, 2 Thessalonians, uh, chapter 2, verses, we're going to read verses 3 to 8. Paul says, let no one in any way deceive you, for it will not come unless the apostasy comes first, and the man of lawlessness is revealed, the son of destruction, the son of perdition who opposes and exalts himself above every so-called God or object of worship, so that he takes his seat in the temple of God, displaying himself as being God. Do you not remember that while I was still with you, I was telling you these things? Paul is, is in the fourth word, he's speaking of the characteristics of the disgusting, detestable acts of the beast, the Antichrist. Uh, the blasphemous words and the works of Antichrist. That's what he's say, saying in the fourth verse. In the fifth verse, he says, don't you remember... I was when I was with you, I explained these things. In the third verse, let's read the third verse. He says, Let no one in any way deceive you, for it will not come unless few things happen. What will not come? The day of the Lord, the day of Adonai, the 70th week of Daniel will not begin until a few things happen first, until two things happen. The apostasy comes first, and we're going to get to the apostasy aspect in just a few minutes. And he speaks of the man of lawlessness being revealed. So for the day of the Lord to come, I'm going to show you the, the chart over here, the diagram, which will make many things clear. What is happening over here is there is, there is a, the day of the Lord cannot, cannot come until a few things happen first. The apostasy and the, the revelation of the man of sin. Not the book of revelation, the revelation of the man of sin. Okay, But for these things to happen, something else needs to take place. Let's read further. Uh, he says in, the, in verses 6 to 8, he says, And you know what restrains him now, so that in his time he will be revealed. For the mystery of lawlessness is already at work. Only he who now restrains will do so until he is taken out of the way. 
then the lawless one will be revealed whom Lord will slay with the breath of his mouth and bring to an end with the appearance of his coming. Amen. Okay, what's happening over here? Now when you read the 8th verse, I'm going to explain you these words. When you read the 8th verse, it speaks of the, this, this, the beast and then it speaks of him being slain. But, but what you need to understand is the 8th verse contains the entire uh, uh, the works of the beast. The man of lawlessness is spoken of as being revealed and then uh, him being slain. But there is a lot that happens between that. So, so that you need to keep in mind. What is happening over here is... Uh, you read the sixth verse and it says, and you know what restrains him now. Who is this him? The him is the beast. The first beast of Revelation 13, the Antichrist. Now you might wonder, this passage is speaking of the he, him, the beast. We have up until now spoken of the she, the woman. Is there any connection? This is the he, that was the she. Yes, there are some connections over here and that is what I'm going to show you. That's why we have come to this passage. But, but we need to understand a few things before we understand the connection. The interwoven uh, beauty of the Bible. So what is happening over here? Uh, Paul says, uh, you know what restrains him. So that in his time he will be revealed. So, so there is somebody who is restraining the, 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 the man of lawlessness from coming on the scene. Okay. Uh, the seventh verse says, for the mystery of lawlessness is already at work. Only he who now restrains will do so until he is taken out of the way. If you read this passage carefully, it speaks of the man of lawlessness being revealed twice. The third verse speaks of him being revealed and the eighth verse speaks of him being revealed. What is that all about? The third verse speaks of uh, him being recognized or revealed to the, to the believers. The eighth verse speaks of the people who are the many of Daniel 9.27. Israel will recognize who it is with whom they have uh, gotten into a covenant with. Feel that the restrainer is somebody who is going to be taken out of the middle, out of the way during the middle of the tribulation. They feel that the, the restrainer is a, is a government. They, they feel that the restrainer are the three horns. To be precise, the third and last horn that the beast will remove, after which the seven horns will submit to him. That is absolutely wrong. The restrainer is not a government. Lawlessness is looking, is, is going to be unrestrained. The power behind this lawlessness is that of Satan, the satanic power, the kingdom of darkness, the prince of the power of the air is the one. And no human government can restrain that power. No human government can, only the power, only the one who is stronger than, who is more powerful than Satan can restrain this work. Lord is the restrainer here, to be precise, the third entity of the Godhead, the Holy Spirit is the restrainer here. If you want to understand eschatology, you need to first know ecclesiology and the unique way that the Holy Spirit is given to the church. Paul, the Pharisee of Pharisees, was, was, was shocked because he knew how the Holy Spirit was given before the church began. We need to understand the Holy Spirit is given in a unique way to the church. You see, the, you see I'm going to show you the, the, the table over here. Let's see the table. This is the table. It shows the 70th week of Daniel. It shows the rapture. It shows the second coming. And you see the arrow over here that is the rapture. Inside that arrow, I have kept a, a, a thinner arrow which says the restrainer is taken out of the way. Restrainer is taken out of the way and then this, this, this man of sin is revealed. The restrainer is connected to the revelation of the son of perdition, this, this beast. The restrainer is connected. This beast cannot come on the world scene until the Holy Spirit is taken out of the middle in the unique way that, it has been, that he has been given. For the mystery of lawlessness is already at work only he who now restrains the Holy Spirit, the He, the third entity of the Godhead, only God has the power to restrain sin. Yes, we see a lot of sin in, in the world. We see a lot of sin, right? But there is more that is coming. It's going to get extremely, it's going to get way more ugly. And, and the restrainer is connected to the, the man of sin coming on the scene. He can come on the scene only after the Holy Spirit 
is taken out of the middle, mesos, out of the way. In the unique sense, he has been given. Some people feel that, is the Holy Spirit not going to be in the tribulation time? Of course it's going to be. He, Holy Spirit has been given uh, in this unique way to the church saints, to the rapture saints. But then also, he's, he's then going to be working for the tribulation saints. Myriads, thousands are going to be saved. And, and even more are not going to be saved. The earth dwellers. You see see uh, the, the diagram okay, over here. The uh, timeline of uh, the man of sin. I have not taken it right up until the beginning of the 70th week of Daniel. He is not going to come and right away sign the covenant with Israel. He is going to rise to power. He will be in power and then Israel will join hands with him. Lord says that I come in the name of my father and ye receive me not. And one will come in his own name. In him ye will receive. Lord said to the Jewish people. They have no clue. I, I remember I've been in Israel and, and in one place I, I saw Holocaust never again. And I have at that point in time and even later and many times I tell my Jewish brothers there is a greater Holocaust that is coming and they hate me for that. They think I'm anti-Jewish. The Bible says this. I myself am a Jew. But the Bible says that a greater holocaust, that's why you see the table over here, the, the second half of the 70th week of Daniel, I've written the time of Jacob's trouble. You need to understand the mystery of lawlessness, brothers, is, is the satanic mystery, the, it is the timeline. It is a timeline which contains three phases. The first phase is after the, after the restrainer has been taken out of the middle, the first phase begins up until the covenant is enforced. The, the covenant that Israel and the beast sign. Then is the second phase, which is the first half of the 70th week of Daniel. And the last phase, the third phase, is the second half of the 70th week of Daniel. And this entire timeline is the mystery of lawlessness. The mystery of lawlessness is, is, it is the unfolding of the satanic program. It is the unfolding of the program and it is connected to this person. Is, he is going to come on the scene but he cannot because of the Holy Spirit in the unique way he is given. The, the second half of the tribulation, uh, the second half of the 70th week of Daniel, it, is, it, it contains the worship of the, of the beast. God the Father, God the Son and God the Holy Spirit and there's the counterfeit of Satan, the counterfeit father. Antichrist, the counterfeit son. He is actually a pseudo-Christ. He is the Antichrist, of course. But he is a pseudo-Christ. The counterfeit son and the false prophet. The counterfeit Holy Spirit. And the false prophet is going to make the peoples, the earth dwellers, to worship this pseudo-Christ. That is the, the second half. Uh, the, uh, of the second half of the 70th week of Daniel. So now, what is this? What is this got to do with that woman? Now, this passage is mainly speaking of the beast. But if you remember, I told you we are going to get back to the apostasy. Let's go to the third verse. Let's read the third verse again. It says, "Let no one in any way deceive you, for it will not come unless the apostasy comes first, and the man of lawlessness is revealed." Now we have understood the man of lawlessness over here. What is this apostasy? Now, now, if you understand the scripture, you will know that we are living in the end times, but we are, to be precise, in the end of the church age. And the church has already gotten apostate. But, listen to this brothers, there is, the apostasy is yet to reach its culmination, its apex. Lord, in the mystery of the seven menorot, Lord, in, his, in one of his letters... He says a certain thing. When you go to a, a bro Christian brother's, uh, a messianic or a Christian brother's home or a, or a Christian store, you find uh, certain paintings or frames where Lord is knocking on the door. And, and who would not want Christ at the door? You would want Christ to come in and we would sup with him, right? But when you go to the passage, you realize the verse in the context of the passage is saying something completely different. Lord in his, in his letter to the Laodicean church says that I am outside the church. He is saying Lord, Lord is supposed to be in the, in the middle of the church ruling every church. 
be it the church of Ephesus or church of Jerusalem or church of Babel or church of whichever church, your local church, Lord, the, 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 the Lord, her ruler is the Lord and he is to be amidst the church. This is a great church where the Lord is outside the church. This is an unsaved church. Read the letter carefully. You will understand. There is a calling out to individuals. But the church itself, herself is unsaved. So many times when you see the painting, it's completely out of context. They don't understand what the actual, actual passage is saying. The point here is the church is, we are right now in the apostate age, but it is going to reach its apex. And what you need to understand, brothers, the first half of the 70th week of Daniel is ecclesiastical Babylon. The Laodicean apostate church is going to join forces, get into unify, unite with the woman Jezebel of the church of Thyatira to form the one world religion. The super false counterfeit church. And that is the reason why the woman in Zakaria 5 was trying to come out. But she was restrained because there is a time when she will be allowed, the satanic program will, allow, will be allowed to unfold. The second half is the worship of the counterfeit son. But the first half of the, of the tribulation of the 70th week of Daniel is about the ecclesiastical Babylon ruling over the religious affairs of the world. The woman sitting upon many waters. So there is a restraining that happened over there because the mystery of lawlessness contains three phases. And the woman was restrained up until a certain time. That is the reason why, brothers, in, in, in Revelation chapter 17, verse 6, John is astonished greatly. Why? John would not have been astonished if, if it, were, it were a pagan system, a heathen system, persecuting the saints of God and the witnesses of Yeshua. John is, is shocked, astonished, because he is seeing the church the woman Jezebel from the church of Thyatira and uh, the apostate church together that the church has become completely satanic. And that is why in Revelation 17, 6, John is shocked. The church has become completely apostate. Yes, we have apostasy today, but the, un the, but the unification, the coalition of the, the apostate church and the woman is yet to take place to form the one world religion, which will take place in the first half of the 70th week of Daniel. That is why the restraining back then in Zechariah 5, the answer to which you cannot find in the Old Testament, only the mystery is, is, is revealed when you study eschatology from the Brit Kalasha. When you stand back, brothers, and when you see the scriptures, you are in absolute, we are in absolute awe of of this book that we have in our hands, in our lap. The, the book is from outside the domain of time because the author is from outside the time domain. The author is, is the one who knew the end before the beginning began. And brothers, here we come to the end of this session. I once again kept the, the table over here. You could go through the table. Uh, and through the uh, diagram over here and we come to the end brothers of uh, this session and uh, uh, we thank our brothers who are supporting us we thank uh, everyone who is connected to the ministry and we thank you for your prayers for your support and uh, uh, we we will be coming back soon with more videos and and one, and one last thing i want to say you know babylon babylon uh, the city is going to become a habitation of demons. She was calling herself, uh, she was calling herself a queen. And I am a queen and I, I, I am no, I'm no widow. She is taunting and mocking Yerushalayim. And she says, I will see no sorrow. You got no clue what's heading your way. Babylon the city, you got no clue. You will, you will receive everything in double. The wrath of God and the woman. And the woman, you're gonna, you have no clue what's heading your way. God of Israel is going to take vengeance upon the woman, upon the city. Because they shed the blood of the saints of God and the witnesses of Yeshua. Hashem Adonai will take vengeance. Praise the Lord.
Brothers, we will end with, with uh, a prayer and uh, we will be, we'll get back soon with another video. We, we, we request you to please pray for the work that we are doing and we thank you with all our heart for uh, your support, your financial support, your encouragement. Thank you, brothers. We'll, we'll end with the prayer. Kadosh, 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 Baruch Hashem, El Shaddai, El Elyon, dear, dear Lord, Yeshua, and Ruach HaKadosh. Lord, we praise Thee for Thy greatness, Thy majesty, Thy awesomeness, Thy righteousness. We prostrate before Thee, O Lord, God of Abraham, Yitzchak, and Yaakov. We praise Thee, we love Thee, we fear Thee, we revere Thee. We thank Thee for... for for the Bible, for this book, this supernatural book, O oh Lord, we thank thee for the vision that thou gave, Zachariah, that thou uh, gave, Yohanan. We long for thy kingdom, O oh Lord, we long for, for the harpazo, for the messianic kingdom to begin. We long for the destruction of Babylon. We long for for Babylon to be destroyed, to become a habitation for, of demons. And we long for thy only son, Melech HaMelech, him to come and rule from Mount Zion. And for, for the fallen tent of, for fallen uh, tabernacle of David to be rebuilt, to be restored. We long, O oh Lord, may thy kingdom come so very soon. We thank thee, Lord, for having helped us uh, to, to, in the session, in this teaching. Thank you, Holy Spirit, having led us uh, every step of the way and having given uh, me the words. And all the brothers who are watching, Lord, please help them understand these amazing treasures and gems given in thy word, that they may diligently study thy word. I pray for all the viewers and all who are supporting us. Thank you, Lord, and that they may grow more. That please bless them with shalom, peace, good health, and most of all, growth in thy word, which is our life, our breath. Thy word that became flesh and tabernacled among us. The Lord of Lords, the King of Kings, Mashiach Nagid Ha Yisrael, Yeshua Hanazarati. In, in His name we pray, Lord. The Lord of Lords, Yeshua Hanazarati. Amen.